Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue with the second plenary lecture of this morning. I'm Erwin Stein from the Leibniz Universität Hannover in Germany. It is my great pleasure and pleasant duty to introduce Professor Shigeru Obayashi from the Institute of Fluid Science of the Tohoku University in Aoba, Sendai, Japan. He received his Doctor of Engineering at the University of Tokyo in 1987 and worked then until 1994 as a visiting scientist at the NASA Ames Research Center. Since 1994, he is professor in the Faculty of Engineering at the Tohoku University. And from 2008 to 2013, he was director of the Transdisciplinary Fluid Interaction Research Center at Tohoku University. Since then, he serves as the director of the newly established Advanced Flow Experimental Research Center. So this is really, in total, a very rich academic career. Um, the re the research activities of Professor Obayashi cover a wide field in experimental and computational fluid dynamics, such as design optimization, evolutionary computational methods, data mining, and assimilation with numerical numes, uh, applications. Professor Obayashi received high awards, amongst them the NASA Ames Honor Award, in 1993, NASA Software of the Year Award in 1998, and the Kawai Medal of the Japan Society for Computational Engineering and Science in 2008. Those are some others which uh, I will not uh, cite now. So his today's plenary lecture is entitled Feature Extraction from Design Space. It shall highlight relations and differences between optimization and design, and will emphasize the right use optimize, of optimizing engineering design. We are looking forward to your lecture. Professor Obayashi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for kind introduction. Uh, <clears throat> it is my great honor to deliver a plenary lecture this morning, and I really appreciate the organizing committee for this invitation. Uh, let me uh, first to show you the, uh, uh, our institute. The, our institute is dedicated for fluid dynamics, but as you know, the fluid dynamics is the basis of many uh, industries. So our uh, re research collaboration with industry covers from energy area, the aerospace area, the medical engineering area, and nano micro applications. And my specialty is uh, aerospace uh, <coughs> area. And uh, we had the government project to develop the regional jet in 2003 to 2007. And this is the main topic I'd like to share with you what we learned from this project. And after this project finished, the main contractor of the project, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry, decided to uh, build a regional jet by themselves. And uh, the program launched in 2008. And uh, last week, we had some additional orders for the, uh, this regional jet called MRJ. And we expect the first flight next year, and the aircraft will be in service in 2017. So the outline of my presentation this morning is uh, I started from multi-objective design exploration, and this is uh, based on what we learned from this project. And then I'd like to introduce you about 
the status of MRJ. And following the application of mode to uh, this regional jet design program. And I'd like to show you also the other industry applications. Uh, one is the hydraulic turbine. The other is automobile tire. And finally, uh, instead of the concluding my presentation, I'd like to discuss with you how uh, computer simulation helps design. Now, the first part, uh, let me start with the uh, discussion about op optimization and design. And because of the uh, <coughs> progress of computational mechanics, uh, a lot of applications using optimization algorithms uh, <coughs> and a strong interest. However, if you talk to uh, industry engineers, they are not really uh, welcome the application of optimization because they feel the optimal solutions are often unrealistic. And this, that is because the optimization problem formulated by objective function, design variables, and constraints are a model of the actual design. So the models may be inaccurate. So designer don't like to pick up the optimal design, but they really like to draw this, their design by themselves. However, <clears throat> they are under the huge uh, pressure to utilize the computational mechanics to support their decisions. So there are distances between optimization and design, and that is because Optimization is essentially mathematics. You need to formulate uh, <coughs> optimization problem uh, rigorously. On the other hand, design is a decision. So it has to be flexible because they face daily the changes and the modifications. So now let's discuss the aircraft design. As you can see here, the aircraft uh, <coughs> consists of various disciplines. The aerodynamics, propulsion, structure, and control, and so on. And if you pursue only aerodynamics, that doesn't result in a good aircraft. You have to seek compromise of all disciplines. So the aircraft design is essentially uh, achieved by multidisciplinary design optimization, MDO. And because each discipline has its own uh, <coughs> objective, it can be defined as multi-objective optimization. Now, how we approach this uh, MDO problem? The ordinary approach is to seek an index that will represent the aircraft performance so that you can compare the performances of various airplanes. And to represent this uh, index, you need a model, for example, to uh, optimize the aircraft the maximum takeoff weight is often used. However, 
the aircraft performance is really uh, consisting of various disciplines. So the aerodynamic performance will be uh, determined by wing platform shape, aircraft uh, airfoil uh, shape, and so on. And if you're looking into structure, you have to uh, look into a wing box, spurs, rib, and so on. So these components has to be integrated into the index. So that is the difficulty in formulating the detailed uh, MDO problem for the aircraft design. But if you are successful in defining a index, an index, you can use the opt optimization algorithm and you can find the direction of improvement. However, the model <coughs> implicitly includes the trade-off between the disciplines. So <coughs> the optimal design is actually determined by the model you constructed, the index you uh, defined. And uh, the problem is that is given often implicitly. Now, what happens if we don't come up with a single performance index? <clears throat> that is uh, called multi-objective optimization. And this concept is first uh, researched by uh, this Pareto, who is an Italian economist in the early 20th century. And uh, <clears throat> the di key difference is the order. If you have single index, you can compare uh, each aircraft performance and it is called total order. For example, if you have only function one, you can compare the design A, B, C, and A is the best, B is the second, and C is the third. However, if you have two objectives, F1 and F2, then it is called a partial order. For example, uh, if you compare B and D, the B is better because it is better in both F1 and F2. But if you compare A and B, A is better in terms of F1, but B is better in terms of F2. So these are called uh, non-dominated solutions or uh, the set of these solutions are called Pareto front. And they essentially represent the trade-offs among design objectives. To solve this multi-objective optimization, there are a number of algorithms. For example, if you can <coughs> define the weight between uh, F1 and F2. That is essentially you define a line in this uh, ob objective function space. And if you <coughs> have a parallel front like this, the tangential line at this point can be uh, seeked by uh, optimization algorithm. <clears throat> and there are other uh, analytical methods to seek uh, to solve the multi-objective optimization. 
And recently, the evolutionary computation is <coughs> applied to this multi objective optimization. And uh, because it's population based search, we can obtain a number of pallet solutions at once. So, uh, this area of research is uh, <coughs> very popular now. And uh, we even have an international conference on evolutionary multi criterion optimization. Now, <coughs> how we understand the pirate front? Uh, for example, if we have this kind of pirate front, this endpoint is called extreme pirate solution that is corresponding to a single optimization. This is the minimum of F1, and this one is minimum for F2. And because this is the performance, if we consider to improve both F1 and F2, you make a simple average as a guess. But often, the pallet front is convex toward the better uh, <coughs> region. That means you see the improvements from this initial guess to the actual pallet front. Now, there are various cases. For example, if you have very flat pallet front, and if, if your design is actually nearby, that means you need to seek a new design to relaxing the uh, requirement in F1. Then, uh, if you relax the F1 slightly, you have huge gain in F2. Or pallet front may not be uh, convex, but in case of concave, uh, this is very tough case because if you try to look at the tangential point from this curve with the straight line, you will never get the point in between the extreme pallet solution. You only get either this one or this one. So that means the simplified approach does not work always. And you may have separate pallet front. So to solve multi-objective optimization, you really need global optimization technique. And after you <coughs> collect number of pallet solutions, you need to visualize it. And uh, it's easy in these two dimensions, but if you start having more objectives, you need data mining technique. So the solving multi-objective optimization is not really looking into single optimal solution, but you are looking into the structure of the design space. So it is like a design exploration. Now, let's consider how to visualize the trade-offs. In 2D, it's easy. If you just plot the pallet front in the objective function space, you will see the trade-offs between F1 and F2. In three dimensions, you may have a, a convex surface towards the origin, like this. And uh, since in 3D, it's not uh, captured the shape 
on the seat, you may uh, project onto 2D, then you will have something like this. And here, <coughs> uh, the edge of this area represents the trade-offs of the two objectives uh, you picked up. But as soon as you have four design objectives, you have difficulty in visualizing it. You can still do a projection. So if you project into 3D, you have some area. And further, you can down to uh, 2D. So then you have something like this, and this edge of the region will represent the trade-offs among two objectives you selected. However, the trade-offs of the other two directions are hidden in this plot. So we came up with utilizing self-organizing map, which is uh, uh, one of neural network model uh, proposed by Kohonen. And uh, it can map the high dimensional data onto two dimensions. However, if you keep the coordinates and distances, you cannot map high dimensions in, onto 2D. So it gave up this, uh, <coughs> the concept of the direction and distance. Instead, we uh, keep the neurons in two-dimensional array, and the neurons will learn the similarity of the data. So the resulting map will give us the qualitative description of data. And how can we use such a map? Uh, basically, we can use the map to, for the cluster analysis. The cluster analysis means when you observe, for example, in the sky in the night, you see the regular star, the red giant, and the white dwarf. And you can group them as the uh, <coughs> three groups. And later, that was the original uh, initial observation. But after the astronomy uh, develops, the theory tells us this, uh, the life of stars starts with mainstream and it grows into red giant. And after that, they will be become a white dwarf. So the cluster analysis gives the very basic scientific tool to uh, <coughs> understand the data. So this is, for example, the resulting self-organizing map. And we can apply the simple cluster analysis tool to draw the, this separation line, the black line. So the each area means a cluster of the uh, <coughs> designs. And if you train this neural net with the, for example, the three-dimensional objective function vector, then the each neuron corresponding to a design with uh, three design objectives. And uh, the neurons, neural net is trained and self-organized so that the similar neurons are neighbored to each other. And then the similar neurons form a cluster. And once you get this picture, the each neuron has, for example, the three uh, design objectives. Then you can color this map with objective function one. Then 
objective function 2, and finally, the objective function 3. So you will have three maps from this one uh, self-organizing map. And these colored uh, self-organizing maps gives us the global structure of the design space. And uh, <clears throat> the clusters the, gives us the classification of designs. And once, if you pick up a cluster of interest, for example, this one, then you can further uh, make an analysis of the cluster. For example, you can uh, color this self-organizing map with design variables. That gives you the distribution of design variables according to objective function value. Or to, for a design to be included to this cluster, you can apply other data mining techniques, for example, the rough set, decision trees, and so on, to extract a rule for a design to be included to this cluster. So the self-organizing map provides the design visualization, the performance visualization. And it's, we think it, it is very essential design tool. Uh, this is the sample of the uh, <coughs> self-organizing map. I uh, first apply the self-organizing map to multi-objective design of the supersonic wing design. So this is the uh, map, and you can see the clusters like this. And this is a corresponding objective function value distributions. The first one is a transonic drag. The second one is the supersonic drag, and bending moment of the wing, and the pitching moment of the wing. And then you can understand the minimum transonic drag region on the left uh, <coughs> hand side, the lower corner. And the sup minimum supersonic drag is right hand side, uh, lower corner. And the uh, <coughs> bending moment is higher at corresponding cluster and lower on the uh, shoulder of the figure. So you can see the trade-offs among the transonic drag, the supersonic drag, pitch, bending moment, and pitching moment from these pictures. <coughs> so we combine the solving the multi-objective optimization with de applying data mining, the knowledge mining. And we call this uh, procedure as the multi-objective design exploration mode. So now let's move on to the uh, uh, R&D project for uh, MRJ. This is movie provided by Mitsubishi Aircraft Company. For the, uh, <laughs> they showed this video at Paris Air Show and uh, so on.
Okay. The MRJ is currently uh, <coughs> have three plants over 190 and 70. Now the MRJ 90 is actually uh, the under the <coughs> construction now. And this is the uh, <coughs> range capability uh, from Paris. So it basically covers the Europe as a regional jet. And the main uh, sales point of MRJ is its fuel efficiency. And uh, roughly 20 to 25 percent improvement is expected comparing, compared to uh, existing regional jet. Also, uh, it will reduce noise the airport noise. Uh, this is the picture of the Skippo airport. And uh, this one is the noise footprint of the existing regional jet as compared to uh, expected uh, MRJ uh, noise footprint. It also reduces the emissions, various emissions especially uh, CO2 in roughly 20%. And these are achieved by various components. The one uh, big uh, improvement is the new engine. It's a geared top fan engine from Platt and Whitney. And also they use the uh, <coughs> composite to uh, <coughs> Uh, horizontal tail and tails, the hori both horizontal and uh, <coughs> uh, vertical tail. Also, they use the advanced CFD and MDO techniques to design the wing. <coughs> so, uh, let's look into what we done for this MRJ. <coughs> Uh, to design MRJ, uh, in the beginning, they considered to locate engines on the rear of the body. So we first looking into wing body configuration, and we constructed the <coughs> aerodynamic model, the structural model, and we combined it under the uh, <coughs> mode. And then they decided to install the engines under the wing. So we, uh, again, looking into wing nozzle, pylon, and body configuration. And these two are actually done at Tohoku University. And then the Mitsubishi took our system, and they <laughs> designed the winglet and the horizontal tail by themselves. So today, I'd like to uh, show you the, the last one, the structural design of uh, horizontal tail. And uh, <coughs> now, the composite is used in the many aircraft. But as a regional jet, they, they decided to go with a regular metal wing. But instead, they are applying the composite in these blue areas. <coughs> and in the beginning, they <coughs> only change the string up and the rib pitch, uh, which is uh, constant in uh, uh, wing span direction. And uh, they did the parameter search, and uh, they knew one is better to the others, uh, but they are not uh, confident that it's a global optimal design. So they decided to apply mode and see if we, it is a global optimal. <coughs> and there, if we, if we M model is very complicated. They try to model the structure 
as much as close to uh, actual design. However, the optimization problem is very simple. They like to minimize the structural weight, and the design variables are rib pitch and stringer pitch, which is constant to in the wing span. So one objective, two design var variables, you really don't need the optimization algorithm. You can just compute the carpet of the uh, <coughs> performance. So this is the rib pitch, this is a springer <coughs> pitch, and this is the total weight. However, <coughs> this simply gives the optimal point, but it doesn't tell you, tells you about the design space very much. So they decided to apply the self-organizing map with the performance, the weight, and the design variables. So it's basically the three dimensions. So th this is the resulting map. And this is the total weight. And this is stringer pitch and rib pitch. Then they are considering why we keep stringer pitch and rib pitch in constant in the wingspan direction. So they decided to recalculate this total weight, uh, divide it into uh, inboard and outboard. So they made additional plots here. <coughs> and uh, so from these pictures, First, when we looking into stringer pitch, this area is optimal. Basically, it corresponding to a single uh, best stringer pitch value. And that will optimize the total weight and uh, that can also optimize inboard weight, the lower region here, and also the outboard weight, the <coughs> blue region here. So you can pick up a single uh, stringer pitch in the wingspan direction, and you can optimize the structure weight all right. However, if you look into a uh, rib pitch, to reduce the inboard weight based on rib pitch, you have to have smaller rib pitch. But if you like to reduce outboard weight, you have to have larger rib pitch. So this means in the rib pitch, you have to have variable rib pitch along the wingspan direction. <coughs> so this uh, <coughs> gives the design knowledge that initially they assumed they can apply a constant stringer pitch and rib pitch in wingspan direction. But by doing this uh, <coughs> process, they find out they have to have variable rib pitch in the wingspan direction. So that, this clearly tells that uh, solution as an optimal point does not give you the design knowledge. But instead, looking into the design space, you can extract the design knowledge, and that can be applied to improve your design further. OK, and now I'd like to uh, move to other industry industrial applications. The first one is hydraulic turbine. 
And this is <coughs> done by uh, Hitachi Corporation. And uh, they are looking into the hydraulic turbine, which is <coughs> which can operate uh, under various uh, water conditions. And uh, <coughs> they uh, try to modify the runner blade with the uh, <coughs> objective functions both at design point and at off design point. And uh, they are success successful in finding the uh, better design, which is uh, <coughs> better than the existing design in the wide area of the uh, design conditions. And also, they apply the another data mining technique, it's called ANOVA, to see the which design variable is important to design a uh, runner blade. And they also apply the self-organizing map. And uh, <coughs> so th these are the three design objectives. The, at design point in the middle and the left is a smaller discharge and on the Right is larger discharge, and if you like to uh, <coughs> increase the efficiency, you have to look into the red area, yellow area, and then you see the middle of, of maybe considered as a sweet spot in the design space. And also they plot the distribution of design variables, for example, 10 and 18 in these figures, and see the distribution of the uh, <coughs> design variables is similar to the smaller discharge. So these design variables will determine the performance at the of design point here. So these are the design knowledge. When they redesign the, <coughs> their design, they know which uh, the design variables they have to keep and which one uh, they can change. The second uh, <coughs> sample is uh, automobile tire. And this is actually uh, presented by Dr. Koichi on Tuesday at this conference. And uh, <coughs> they actually launched the actual model, uh, Blue Ras 1. So, and uh, the presentation is how they reach the actual design based on uh, computer simulation. And uh, uh, they are looking into the roll resistance and lateral stiffness. And also, they uh, compare with the uh, distribution of design variables. And uh, this is the roll distance, and this is lateral stiffness. So if you want to reduce the roll resistance, you have to design like here. And if you increase the lateral uh, stiffness, you have to be on the left lower corner. So this red line gives you the trade-offs among the, these two particular design objectives. And uh, <coughs> if you, for example, looking into this one, will determine the increase of the lateral stiffness to uh, reduction of rolling distance. And also, yeah, this one, you have the low value and high value. So this actually the <coughs> determines the trade-offs among two design objectives. 
they also perform the decision tree analysis and see uh, which uh, design variables is the uh, <coughs> has the key role in determining in design. And they actually made an experiment to confirm the, this design knowledge, and that comes to the actual design. So now I'd like to finally discuss about how computer simulation help design. And to discuss this, we have to look into a design theory. And there are many design theories, uh, but one of the design theory tells us that design is the abduction. What is abduction? The abduction is the one of the inference uh, defined by uh, Pross, who is a uh, in the early 20th centuries. And uh, there are three patterns of inferences, uh, deduction, induction, and abduction. And it, <coughs> they are like this. And abduction is, in essential, corresponding to the design, which means abduction creates hypothesis to the best design. And uh, that includes, of course, the mistakes or discovery, and also the preliminary, preliminary evaluation, evaluation of design uh, candidates. So if design is abduction, to help the design means help the abduction. That is, designer's abduction. So we need a gadget for designers to think about the design proposals or design hypothesis. And hypothesis may be to find a pattern from various observations. That, so if we're, gonna, we're going to uh, provide gadget for abduction, that has to be uh, <coughs> make possible the various observations. So we came up with the idea of the structuralization and visualization of design space. So in essence, the providing in an optimal solution does not help designer. But we need uh, feature extraction from the design space. That will help the designer. <clears throat> so the mode based on structuralization and visualization of design space, what we call the structure, structuralization is to identify trade-offs among multiple design objectives. And visualization means to create the uh, buzz eyed view of high dimensions of the design space, mainly the objective function space. And then uh, we do a feature extraction that is to identify the region of interest in the design space, and possibly we may lead to a new design problem. So, uh, <coughs> Structuralization and visualization of design space enable us to extract the feature from the design space. Okay. That is my message today, and uh, this is acknowledgement uh, to a Mitsubishi aircraft company and also the supercomputers uh, in our institute. And uh, for the CFD, the professor Nakahashi is task code helped us a lot. And the uh, application result I showed you today is by Dr. Morino at the Mitsubishi Aircraft Corporation and Mr. Sato from Hitachi and uh, Dr. Koishi from Yokohama Rubber 
cooperation. So uh, stay tuned for the first flight of MRJ next year. Uh, we have the uh, model engine installed right now, so as, uh, construction is going well. Thank you very much. So many thanks, uh, Professor Bayashi, for your impressive strategic lecture.